Now, before I go on, it turns out often re attractors are very intuitive, but strange repellers are also very important. And what strange repeller is, is a non-wandering set of points which have a property that in their neighborhood, uh, neighborhoods are not open, so no matter how close to you start to any of these points, you might run away out of the system. One of these repellers, the three-disc billet system, is what we will spend much time explaining this concept with. The three-disc billet is a totally intuitive thing, at least for people of certain age. There used to be time where games involved physical motion, and the pinball wizard was a person who could manipulate the entire pinball table, shown here in the physicist's version, consisting only of the three discs on a table, in such a way that you could get very many bounces of the ball in this way, win the game, because the idea of the good pinball game is how long you can keep bouncing before you get sunk, you know, you go to the sum hall at the end and you fall out. So we will actually play an incredibly precise game of pinball. We'll be able to compute something about a pinball to 100 significant digits. Not that anybody cares. But pinball, you have very good intuition about. You know that you have to get that ball rather precisely aimed to be able to ex execute some sequence of bounces you want. And your intuition tells you that no matter how hard you try, so you make a very perfect table, you make a very perfect flipper, etc. Uh, you make it very noiseless. Your intuition is that you won't, never will be able to bounce a ball like this, you know, more than five or ten times in desired pattern. It'll go random on you. And again, this randomness is not because your pinball table is imperfect, as you'll see. It's because of phenomenon which we call chaos. It says, it, if it's unstable, it's unpredictable. Individual trajectory is unpredictable. So here is an example of a perfect pinball shot. It would be a periodic orbit in which you start at disk one, you go to disk two, you go to disk one, you go to disk three, one, three, one, etc. <clears throat> but you know that you will not be able to do this in such a way that this will repeat itself forever. But mathematically we can do it. And it turns out this solution, which is an example of periodic orbit, not of a flow, but as you'll see in the next lecture of the map, this uh, captures a very important feature of long-time behavior of such ergodic systems.